Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is our one of our new uh, kits. We're coming out with about 25 new kits within the early New Year, so uh, stay tuned for some new cool stuff. This is an LM338 power supply circuit with heat sink and uh, cooling fan. The cooling fan will work only if you have more than 12 volts at the input. The input is designed for AC and DC. Uh, you can put in either. The nice thing is, is because there's a bridge rectifier on board, you can put DC positive and DC ground at, in any order on the input. Or you can put AC. There's a rectifier, and uh, there is a 12-volt regulator on board that, that controls the fan. And uh, there's the LM338 underneath the fan that controls the variable output, which can be varied through this variable resistor. So what this kit uh, what this video will serve to do is show you how to put this kit together. So let's start off with the the bag of components. Okay, so what we have is our PCB, our two terminal blocks used for our input and output, uh, three 100 nano uh, farad uh, ceramic capacitors, one 200 ohm resistor, um, screws and, and uh, nuts for the mounting of the LM338 in the heatsink, a 10 microfarad capacitor, your bridge rectifier, your variable resistor, uh, and your variable, variable resistor cap, um, four screws, four nuts, and four washers for the mounting of the fan, your LM or your LM7805, 7812, sorry, 12-volt regulator for the fan, two power diodes, your LM338, your heatsink, your fan, and uh, your two power capacitors at the output. We'll talk about each of, each of these as we go along. So the first thing we want to do is we want to mount our LM338 and heatsink, but we don't want to actually do any soldering. We're going to mount it, and uh, we're going to leave it. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. So what we've done is we've taken the heatsink, placed it down on the board, placed our LM338 on top of it, put two screws through it, and mounted it on the other side. We haven't soldered the two leads. We've just left these bolts loose. And that's because there are components that are going to go around the heatsink. We just want to make sure that we leave them enough room. And then we we tighten the uh, bolts. And then do the soldering on the LM338. Now don't worry about putting the LM338 or the heatsink backwards. Everything only fits one way, so you're not going to have a problem. Surrounding the heatsink, there are uh, areas for three 100 nano capa uh, farad capacitors, one 10 microfarad capacitor, one 200 ohm resistor, and two power diodes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put those in piece by piece. First we're going to throw in our capacitors. They're easily, they're well labeled and uh, uh, we'll start with the ceramics. Since they're ceramic it doesn't matter which way you put them in. They're not electrolytic. Our one electrolytic we'll, we'll do secondly uh, and there is a, a certain way you have to put it in. So as you can see uh, we've placed our first ceramic capacitor here, our second here, and our third is right behind the heat sink here. Again, it doesn't matter which way you put it in. Put these capacitors in. They're all the same. They're all labeled 104, which is 100 nano or 0 0.1 microfarads. Next, we're going to put our, our first electrolytic capacitor in. Now, for those of you who don't know about electrolytic capacitors, there's two leads. One is short, one is long. The long lead is positive. Um, we're going to place it right here on the board. It's labeled 10 microfarad. So put the longer lead in the side with the with the uh, plus sign. So we're putting that the there is no side with a, a negative symbol, only one with a plus. So place the longer lead in the side with the plus symbol, and then solder to solder your capacitor in. Next, we're going to do the diodes and the resistor. Now, the diodes and the resistor, one, di one of the diodes is a little bit tricky and, one of the re and the resistor is a little bit tricky. This has to do with the placing of the heat sink, which we'll talk about after, this, after I solder the capacitor in. Now, we're going to place our two power diodes. Now, what you'll want to notice about the diodes are there's one side with just black and one side with a white strip on it. Uh, in this case, the white strip is on the right side. You can see my screwdriver. And in this case, the white strip is on this side of the screwdriver. Now these uh, diodes are to be placed in the areas labeled 1N4007 because that is the name of the diodes. But it matters which way you put them in. On the board there is a little black indicator 
uh, that shows you which way to put them in. Our first diode should be placed here, and uh, for those of you who uh, obviously you can't see the marker here, you're supposed to play it with the black side to the left and the white strip to the right, very close to the heat sink. And you're going to have to be very careful when you do that. You don't want to do any shorting to the heat sink. Uh, now you're not going to have that problem, but this is why we haven't mounted our, we've fully mounted our heat sink yet. Uh, the diode up here, we want to have our, the black side, our anode on this side of the board and the white side on this side of the board. There is a black indicator on the side closest to us. So what I'll do is I'll mount those two. I'll try to give you, I'll try to show you exactly how uh, they're mounted and we'll do the resistor and from then on it's smooth sailing or pretty much smooth sailing. So as you can see the white side of the diode is close to the heat sink. That's the cathode. Uh, you can't see the diode over here right now so I'll there we go you can see the white side is closest to my screwdriver and those are the diodes now because we haven't fully mounted this yet the, we haven't soldered it down we can move the heatsink around just to make sure that we haven't done any shorting on that diode so the last thing we want to do is mount our 200 ohm transistor or resistor right below the diode where it's labeled 200 R uh, we're going to mount that but we're going to add a little bit of space out like that. We're going to bend the, tr the resistor a little bit just so we have a little bit of room for our heat As sink. As you can see, now I've got a little bit of room between my resistor and the heat sink. But that's because I can move the heat sink around a little bit because I haven't fastened it. When you get it per when you have all the components soldered in uh, and you made sure that there's no shorting on the diode or the resistor to the heat sink, we're ready to solder our heat sink or solder our LM338 to the board and tighten our bolts so let's do that make sure that when you solder your LM338 that there's a healthy amount of solder and that the solder joint is very good and then you can cut your leads the next thing we want to do is mount our 12 volt regulator that that regulates input power to the fan and that's placed right in here. Now we want to make sure that it's facing a certain way, so I'll solder it in uh, with the back, the back facing the heat sink. And you want to push that down as far as you can. Okay, so I soldered in the regulator. I just wanted to add that these two leads will remain empty. It's labeled U1 for another 0.1 microfarad capacitor or 100 nanofarad capacitor. It's not necessary. It doesn't come with a kit. Only the three ceramic capacitors come with a kit. So now, we have our regulator soldered. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the fan. When you mount the fan, there's four components you need to take into consideration, or rather four sets. Your fan, your uh, screws, your nuts, and your washers. So you also, when you, put the, when you put the fan on, make sure that the wires are facing this way, facing where the output capacitors will be going. What you want to do is place your four nuts through the holes, uh, get them through the four holes over, right over top of the heat sink. Uh, you might need a screwdriver for this. Place the washers on the other side and then put the nuts on. At that point, we're going to do some adjustments. So go ahead and start that, but don't tighten the nuts. You'll notice that uh, this washer and uh, this washer will be fitting on top of some solder joints. Don't worry, uh, the washers are act as an insulation between the nut and uh, screw from the board, so you can tighten those up without any problem. Now, what you're going to want to do is make sure that the lengths of the screws are about equal, uh, and this will take some tuning. Uh, as well, you want to make sure that the fan is resting on top of the heat sink. So just fiddle around with it until you get it all uh, hunky-dory and solid, at which point you can tighten the screws on the bottom. My fan is now uh, properly secured. We've now got some wiring to do. Just in front of the regulator, there's four spots for wiring. Uh, we only care about two. Uh, there are There's a spot for 12 volts, which is where we'll put our, our red wire, two grounds, and then a VIA, which we're not going to concern ourselves with. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put our red wire 
through the 12 volt hole. Uh, we're going to skip the next hole, which is ground, and we're going to use the third hole just for isolation. The third hole is ground as well. We're going to place our black wire and uh, solder it in the in that in that area. Again, it didn't really matter, but just for the sake of isolation. And as, as for the green wire, cut it. We don't need it. Cut it close to the to the fan, uh, just so that it's not it's not an eyesore. You can cut the wire off too, and you, you know cut the wire after you know get, leave it about seven centimeters depending on how good a wire you are leave yourself some slack and uh, wire that up and then we're almost so done. our wiring is complete red wire space black wire now we're ready to do the output capacitors and the output terminal block now uh... one is the both capacitors are labeled uh... two thousand two hundred microfarads but what we're actually going to do is what we what the kit comes with is a two thousand two hundred microfarad capacitor and a 4,700 farad microfarad super capa or, uh, capacitor, sorry. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to place the 4,700 microfarad on the right and our 2,200 microfarad on the left. Now this is a very important step. Uh, these are all electrolytic, so again, there's a long lead and a short lead. The long leads will go in the side with the positive labeled, which can be seen right here. And the uh, uh, for the 2,200 microfarad capacitor, the, the positive symbol is on this side. So we want to place our longer leads on this hole and this hole. And our shorter leads in the bottom two holes. Uh, and then we're going to place our terminal block, which is pretty straightforward. So now the terminal block and the two capacitors have been soldered in. Another indicator that you've soldered them in the right way, you'll see the white stripe, which indicates the negative, facing the left for both capacitors. So the uh, terminal block screws are outwards, not inwards. Don't mess that up, or you're going to have to desolder it and resolder it. So that goes for the output side. Next, we're going to worry about the input side. We have three components to worry about here. We've got our, another, our terminal block, easy. Our uh, bridge rectifier, it only fits one way because there's a large gap here. And our uh, variable resistor for uh, voltage out. We're almost done, guys. Thanks for watching so far. Let's solder in the uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, the curved side on the top is facing the left. Fits right into place. Uh, yeah, so I'll solder all three of those components in. Then we'll put on the knob, the uh, variable resistor knob, and then we'll test it. So now we are done. With exception to putting on the, the resistor knob. So what we want to do is turn the, res the variable resistor all the way to the left. Notice that there is an indicator on the top. You want to have that facing the lower left. And you just pop, should just pop on. So now, that's power low. That's power high. So let's test it. Time to test. We've got our output hooked up to our multimeter. Our input hooked up uh, to the our, our DC input hooked up to the input. Now again, since it's D, we've got a bridge rectifier here, you can put the ground DC ground uh, and DC positive on either line. It doesn't matter because of, uh, because of the bridge rectifier. So in this case, I've got DC positive on the left and ground on the right because this kit is designed for DC or AC input. Uh, so you can use a transformer, you can use a wall supply, doesn't matter. So let's turn it on. Fan works. Fan works. You can see our output. Our output is 1.2 volts, which is the lowest. And we've got about 22 volts on the input. Now, because we have 22 volts in the input, we're only seeing tw maximum 20 volts in the output, roughly. It's because the there is a, a loss on the diodes. Uh, there is a loss on the uh, by diodes. I mean the, the bridge rectifier circuit. There will be a few volts lost there if you're using DC at the input. But now you've got a big bulky power supply for your motor circuits, and uh, it's well heat synced. You've got a nice fan. So if you're ready to drive some actuators or some uh, heavy loads. This is your baby. This can be used for tons of different applications. It's a lot of fun to put together. Uh, you'll feel you'll feel pretty Thanks good. Thanks for watching. I want to hope you if you purchase this that you enjoy it and have a lot a lot of fun building it. We had a lot of fun uh, designing it. Thanks for watching.